Hola, ¿qué tal? Saludos de Lifeway. Mi nombre es Giancarlo Montemayor y en esta ocasión tengo el privilegio de estar con mi amigo y nuestro autor Robert Wolgemuth y en esta, en esta tarde, en esta mañana, queremos eh, pasar un tiempo con el hermano Wolgemuth para hablar de su libro, uh, La Recta Final. Y en este eh, tiempo queremos uh, discutir un poco acerca de qué significa terminar bien la carrera para el Señor. Así que quisiera darle la bienvenida al hermano Wolgemuth y después uh, vamos a cambiar al idioma inglés y vamos a tener subtítulos para ustedes para que nos puedan también seguir uh, para los que no hablan eh, inglés. Así que, uh, brother Robert, how are you today? Uh, thanks for being with us. Oh, it's such a great honor to be with you, my friend. Yeah, we we were talking about your your book about what it means to uh, to end well, and I was so blessed uh, to to read it. So even though I'm still in my 30s, uh, I, I look forward to to finish like you. <laughs> oh, thank you. And just uh, there, there's a quote in the book that says, uh, "Young men should should look at at older men and." And, you know, leave every anxiety away of what it means to age well in the Lord. So uh, we're going to have a, a conversation about what it looks like to 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 end well. And just um, but before we do that, let's let's start with uh, a brief introduction about yourself. Tell us about uh, who you are. For those who don't know you, tell us about your family. Well, um, I am 74 years old. I'm deep into my gun lap. <laughs> Uh, I've been married to Nancy Lee DeMoss Walgamuth for seven years. I was married for almost 45 years. And then my wife uh, stepped into heaven in 2014. Mm -hmm. I knew Nancy because I was her agent. I represented her writing work to publishers. And so my late wife also knew Nancy and loved Nancy And so before she died, my late wife told two of her friends that she wants me to marry Nancy. <laughs> well. But she never told me that. <laughs> so after she was gone, those two friends said, actually after she was gone and then I began to date Nancy, those two friends said to me, this is exactly what she wanted you to do. Mm. So I've been married to Nancy for seven years. And it's been an incredible adventure. I moved from Florida mm -hmm. <laughs> to Michigan. And right now it is so cold. <laughs> it, it's December uh, and it's so cold. And I lived in Orlando, Florida for 17 years and had completely forgotten what winter feels like. Okay. But I tell her every day, Nancy was so worth it, mm -hmm. cold weather or not. So I have two daughters. They're 51 years old and 48 years old, five grandchildren. One of them is married. And so I have a great grandson named Ezra, who was born in January. We were all, we were all together on Thanksgiving, this past Thanksgiving, and I am a blessed man. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so grateful uh, to the Lord. I've written 25 some books mm -hmm. and um, gun lap was my latest book. I've actually just written another one that comes out in a couple of months. So um, I grew up in a Christian home, very gratefully. My daddy was a preacher and my mother was an angel. I have five siblings and there are about a hundred of us, that whole family, it's crazy. Mm. And um, by and large, people who are walking with the Lord. And so another reason to be grateful. So. I'm happy to be talking to you about this really important book. Yeah, I've had the opportunity to listen to your story uh, personally, but also in, in several uh, platforms and conferences. And it's so inspiring to see what the Lord has done in your life, in Nancy's life, and just uh, really inspiring to to see what the Lord does. Oh, uh, thank you. So, um, yeah, let's talk about the book. You, you mentioned in the first pages of the book that you always have one person in mind when you write a book so who's that person uh that you are mm. addressing in this book um and what 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 is that message you want to tell, tell yeah them? thank you that's the right question to ask at this point uh my old friend tim lahay now in heaven 
-hmm. told me that a book is a long letter to one person. So this is a 60,000 word letter to one person. The reason he said that, the reason why I think it's important is that people read books one at a time. I mean, rarely is a book read in public. It's mm -hmm. me and a cup of coffee and or a fireplace or whatever, and I'm sitting here reading this book. And so it's a dialogue. It's a one man and another man back and forth dialogue. And and so my my goal in writing a book is to actually envision a person, in this case a man, listening to me and then me listening to him back and forth, back and forth. So there's no microphone, there's no platform. It's just me and the reader. And so that's my goal in this book, in this book called Gunlap. My goal was to treat the reader like he's a friend and to say, I understand what you're facing, what you're dealing with. I want you to know I understand. I want you to know that God cares about this season of your life. And in spite of the fact that this may be a discouraging time, I want you to be encouraged. God knows where you are, who you are, and he still has some good things in mind for you before the end. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you, you also mentioned that um, this is a book for those who are in... Uh, who are aging right but but also for those who aspire to age well so right. uh, we want this book to be read by both young men and also people who are in that season of life is that correct yes um you know one of the wonderful things about technology is you get immediate feedback now sometimes that's bad because <laughs> it's <laughs> you don't want to read it but just i mean yesterday i received an email from a man i've never met um, a very kind email about Gunlab. He gave a copy to his dad. Um, I've never met him and I've never met his dad. But this is what his dad wrote to him after receiving and reading the book. Thank you for guiding us through the journey. You give us direction, hope, and needed calm. Grateful to God for you. So when when an author reads something like that, that somebody took the time, read the book and is encouraged by it it's it, it's it's amazing it's a thrill so now it's really this is really important that you understand the point of the book it really isn't about finishing in fact i just finished writing a book called finish line and that book comes out in a couple of months this book is about living It's about running the last lap of your race and what you're going to do with that last lap. So there is there has there has been confusion from the very beginning that this book is about death. It's about the finish line. It's about ending your life. It's about what you're going to do when you die. Mm -hmm. This book is about running the last lap and making the most of it. Mm -hmm. So my goal is to encourage men And by that, encouraging women who love those men to make the most of these years. It could be years that the Lord gives you. So it's a long last lap. It's a long gun lap. Um, but some guys get to this point of their lives in their lives and say, there's nothing else to do. I'm, I'm going to put everything in neutral. I'm going to shift away from uh, my life and my relationships and my work, and I'm going to just do nothing. I'm going to watch Netflix or, you know, read books, or I'm going to disengage. So you, you can't imagine the number of men that I have spoken with over the last year since this book came out mm -hmm. who were exactly there, a good friend of mine, a, a good friend a very bright man, uh, highly educated in the publishing business his whole career, mm -hmm. who actually said to me when I woke up this morning, I looked at the ceiling in my room and he said, I thought to myself, there's no reason for me to live. Wow. 
And my my dream with this project is to crawl into the experience of that man to say, I understand. I know what it feels like to begin to feel worthless and youth, useless, but don't feel that way. The Lord has some really good things in store for you during this season of your life. And I want you to be encouraged by that. Mm -hmm. So that's that's the goal of this book. That's why I wrote it. And the response that I've gotten since it came out has been absolutely mm -hmm. amazing and wonderful. Yeah, it's it's our privilege to have it just released in Spanish a couple of months ago. Uh, La recta final se llama en, en español. And um, one of the reasons why we decided to publish it is because, of course, uh, getting to know you has has been great, and uh, and I admire you as an author and as a person. But at the same time, looking at uh, at least in Spanish, looking at the catalog of things available for the church and the consumer. Um, there's really nothing that deals with this topic. Um, perhaps, perhaps a few, but they are uh, they're they're um, out of print. And and this one in particular uh, deals with with that age on how to live well. And if, if you allow me, let me tell you a brief story. Uh, Please. When uh, one of the books that changed my life, uh, it was my my uh, father-in-law before I married my my uh, my wife. He gave me a book by John Piper, Don't Waste Your Life. And that book changed my life. And one of the stories that it's so famous is of that, that man who is uh, collecting shells by the beach. And Piper says, I don't, wanna, I don't want you to end like that. I don't want you to, to just enjoy um, your life where, 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 uh, when it doesn't have any purpose, right? Just right. live yes. very carelessly and without a purpose. And I think your book addresses that, uh, that issue for that age in particular. Uh, so well, and and you encourage us to aspire for that uh, purpose that God has given us for every season of our lives, not just for that. Uh, Amen. Lives. Amen. You know, retirement is not a biblical concept. Mm -hmm. um, it It's a new season. And for those of us who are at the age of retirement, where we could just stop being productive, there's there really isn't a space for that in the Christian walk. I mean, the Lord has something really important. You know, be a Caleb, take another mountain, mm -hmm. do something amazing. You have your schedule's different. You don't have many, many of the obligations you used to have, but there is so much that can be done. There's so much wisdom that you've collected. So use that. Take take advantage of that and 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 learn to embrace where you are. Learn to embrace your physical um, challenges because they are, they're here. Excuse me. Um, you know, I've, I've never been 75 years before, old before. And so I'm, I'm learning new things about what I can and cannot do physically. But my goal is to embrace that. My goal is to not complain about that, to not tell people about my aches and pains, but mm -hmm. to embrace where I am, where the Lord has me, and say, this is, I'm I'm going to do everything I can to make this last lap the most important, the most wonderful lap of my, ex, my, my experience, my life. Mm -hmm. So for, for this audience, if you, if you could uh, uh, give us uh, just a brief outline of what you've done with this book. Um, we, we talked about the importance of having a purpose for that age in particular. But how does it look like to live like that? on a daily basis? Well, first of all, you have to be intentional. Mm -hmm. um, you don't just fall into a plan. You you have to be intentional. My, my great joy is to have a wife to share this with, but to share the vision of, of what I want to do, my, what my dreams and hopes are. In fact, one of the conversations Nancy and I have almost every morning is, did you dream? What did you dream about? And and I believe the Lord is is still challenging me with frontiers to conquer, with good things to do. Uh, and it doesn't include retirement. It doesn't include stopping. Mm -hmm. You know, I would I my my dream is to die with my track shoes on. I can't run as fast, but I don't want to stop. So this 
This is about encouraging men before the Lord to make the very best of this lap, of these years, of this season. Um, the, the challenge for guys like us who maybe have left the business that we were involved in mm -hmm. is to, to seek out friendships. Uh, I mean, number one, get more involved in your church than you were before. Um, the, this, the, the one thing that Jesus promised that would be blessed was his body, the church. Mm -hmm. The gates of hell won't prevail against it. That's what he said. And, and if you're my age and you're not involved in a church and you're not putting your hand in the air and saying, okay, I'll help out, whether it's the kids, you know, who are in second grade or teaching an adult Sunday school class for a season or whatever, get involved in church, be surrounded by God's people. That That's in addition to, to embracing your wife and, mm -hmm. and continuing to work on your marriage, get involved, get even deeper involved in your church. It's critical at this time. Mm hmm you know, everywhere we look at the New Testament, Old Testament, we see that that reality that retirement is not for this for this life. Uh, it's uh, we're gonna rest right. when we're in heaven, and even even then we're gonna be doing stuff, right? <laughs> um, but there there are seasons in life, and 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 work does change um, in, according to our season in life. Uh, when when you have kids, it's different than when you have grown up kids, and. Uh, when you are retired from work officially, there are other things that you could be doing. But I, I find it so interesting that uh, the Apostle Paul, it wasn't until the very last um, season of his life, he knew he was going to be dead anytime soon. And that's when he said, I finished the race. Not that's before. Right. Uh, that's really good. Yeah. And um, it mean, in the meantime, he was writing letters. He was visiting. Uh, well, he was in prison, but before that, he was. I know visiting uh, all all over the place, all over the world. All the uh, going, trying to go to Spain to share the the gospel. He was a really busy man trying to share yep. the gospel with the world. Right. That's exactly right. That's wonderful. One of the things that your listeners are going to realize is the older you get, the more you find yourself hearing voices this can don't don't freak out <laughs> i found myself the older i got saying things to myself listening to myself being discouraged by those voices um for example technology overwhelms me anybody my age unless they're really unusual are overwhelmed by technology mm -hmm. in fact I was a couple months into writing this book and I lost 30,000 words. Oh no. I tell that story in the book. Um, you know, I, my, my computer was telling me that my disc, my hard drive was full, et cetera, et cetera. I got a, a tech to work on it and I lost 30, 30,000 words. Mm -hmm. So what am I going to do with the overwhelming sense that I am lost in technology? Does do I do I hear myself? Do I hear the voices saying to me, "You're stupid, you're old, you're useless, you're worthless"? I mean, that is one of the great liabilities for this season of life. Mm. Um, and in my challenge, Martin Lloyd Jones, the great Welsh preacher, talks about this specifically, and he says. Don't listen to yourself, speak to yourself. Mm -hmm. God's promises are for you. And you say to those voices, I'm not going to listen to you. <laughs> I'm going to listen to God's voice. I'm going to do everything I can to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit speaking to me, sometimes in the darkness of the night. And I'm going to do everything I can to be obedient to that voice and to be faithful. Mm -hmm. and, and that changes everything. So the older you get, the older I've gotten, the more I realize that I can be discouraged by listening to the voices who are saying to me, you're useless, you're old, you're stupid, your health is failing, just give up, don't try anymore. Instead of speaking back to those voices and say, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength.
Mm -hmm. Amen. Um, speaking about the role, the role of older men in church, you mentioned uh, that it's important to be involved in church. I think there's a great opportunity for older men to invest in younger people. Uh, scripture says that the strength of men is their youth, well, and the wisdom is uh, the crown of, of of being an old man, right? So right, exactly, there's a. Uh, I think there's a balance. The young men can use that strength, but we need the wisdom of older people investing in our lives. Can you talk about the importance of that? Yeah, I would say this goes both ways. Mm -hmm. I have to look like I'm available. I have to look like I am available. And younger men have to ask me. They they so last last weekend. I started a conversation with two young men who are in their 20s. And we have committed to going through a book together. It's a book on prayer. And they had to be willing to ask for my input. And I had to be willing to set aside my schedule to spend time with them. It goes both ways. Mm -hmm. I need to I need to look like I'm interested. And they need to be willing to ask for my input. So it, it takes both. I can be willing, but if no younger man comes to me and says, could we hang out? Right. Then it's not going to happen. So that transaction, this is Titus too. I want to be that kind of guy who, who listens, who doesn't judge. I mean, do I understand a man in his twenties? No, I don't. I don't understand him. I don't understand his world. I don't, I don't understand the, the pressures that he faces, but I do understand what it is to live 50 years knowing Jesus, mm -hmm. 70 years knowing Jesus. And I can share that with him and I can encourage him. I mean, there is just nothing. This is Hebrews 12. I want to be in the crowd that's shouting encouragement to these young men. I want to be that cloud of witnesses um, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. So I'm in the stands. I'm cheering for this guy. He's racing toward his own finish line. That's what else what else would be more important and wonderful for me to do mm -hmm. that's awesome well brother uh we're really encouraged about this uh this upcoming uh well this already published book and we want to encourage our audience to uh go to their bookstore their favorite bookstore and just get it and read it for themselves but also give it away to people mm -hmm. they know who are living that that in that age anything else you want to say to the audience robert anything you can oh. Thank you. No, I'm, you know, I'm your friend. I'm walking with you. Mm. My, my prayer, my dream is that you would read this book and, and feel like we're having this conversation and walk away encouraged that that's what matters really. Amen. So I hope this conversation has been uh, helpful for the, for the audience. Uh, it was helpful for me personally. So thanks for joining me in this conversation. And uh, I'm going to switch to Spanish now. Los invitamos a que vayan a su a librería favorita y puedan adquirir este libro de recta final por el autor Robert Wolgamuth. Um, y los invitamos a que también vayan a nuestra página en lifeway.com y visiten uh, y puedan observar todos los uh, títulos que tenemos disponibles para ustedes. Dios bendiga y muchas gracias. <música>